Hello dear students, today we are on a new topic that is multimodal discourse analysis. It's a very significant topic with regard to the discourse analysis. Uh, here in this video we shall be learning and trying to understand introduction to this method as well as how does it proceed to work and give the results to the analyst. So let us proceed. The very first thing that we must understand is the type of definition of this multimodal discourse analysis that is MDA. It says this is an approach to studying communication that considers the use of multiple modes or channels of communication. It means that when we look at any piece of text that may be containing colors, voices, that may be containing some pictures or sketches or, or uh, some other kind of emojis type things as well, one researcher when entering into this he needs to understand all these modes of communication because by using everything like that the writer or the creator of that picture of that piece wants us to understand the thing or communicate with the thing in these different ways so involving multiple ways to understand discourse that should be called as multi-model discourse analysis it has got very important aspects also. Number one concept in it is the modes. Modes are different forms or channels through which communication occurs. Modes can include, for example, verbal, spoken, or written language. It means that we can, in this modern era, face a picture which may be having spoken words in it or the written language in it. And it can have multiple other sources as well. The multiple discourse analysis wants us to go behind all these we should not only look at the verbal modes but also the visual modes for example some of the images colors or the way the thing has been typed that can also be present images and colors are also significant because they convey specific message the body language again comes the next one this also shows lots of kind of communication how the body has been presented posturing sitting standing or waving whatever the situation is that goes to show the kind of impression of communication we also need to look at the spatial space that means how the things have been arranged which space how much space has been given to what what kind of article or the picture in the same way if there are some attached sounds to it we need to look for that as well to understand to get the whole essence of communication that it is conveying so in that way all these modes may be employed in order to really get the benefit of multimodal discourse analysis among these semiotic sources should be specially considered the semiotic sources have two types of relationship one is the their internal relationship that means how they interact with each other in order to create the meaning for example if you look at the images or the text and see how these images the text interact with each other to create the kind of meaning this is not simply the kind of interacting it means the relationship the dependence or the interdependence or one can also call how one affects the other in that way these semiotic sources become important to be considered while having multimodal analysis similarly there are multimodal ensembles that actually means that these are the grouping how do these group together on any page on any picture on any write-up how do these different modes combine together for example one can look at the website uh, where we can see the text also the images also the videos and other interactive elements when these combine together and one needs to see how do these combine together to create a different meaning and how if these combinations are disturbed what kind of difference in the meaning would occur so that also is very significant while entering into the multimodal analysis there are different methods to involve uh, to be involved in order to conduct this uh, multimodal discourse analysis first of all the method involves data collection by data collection we simply don't mean to look at the words but also mean that we should collect data about the images about the videos about the audios or about any other relevant material i mean 
this is not one mode of analysis so it is not one mode of analysis it needs multiple mode of data collection as well not only the collection in that way but also the transcription i mean if we have got the speech if we have got the video we need to transcribe it as well not only simple verbal transcription but also the gestures but also the visuals but also different kind of movements whatever these are we need to transcribe and then it involves coding and categorization. This actually means that the data may be presented in the form of the codes, labels, or the categories, because it will help us understand uh, more minutely and in details way what these data types are and how do they create meaning. Same is the case with another method that the contextual analysis should be conducted, that one needs to go into the context of the creation of these communications and to see how much context is important. I mean, sometimes the context can be social, sometimes cultural, and sometimes it can be situational context as well. In all these, or according to all these contexts, the analysis may be conducted. In order to proceed further with this kind of analysis, there are different tools available. These are digital tools, for example, ELAN, a tool for annotating video and audio data. And Vivo software that supports qualitative and mixed method research. Transana for analyzing video data, especially useful in ethnographic researches. So these three tools are mentioned here, but there may be much more to that. These tools are very helpful in creating analysis of multimodal nature. And then there are some of the applications. I mean, where this multimodal data analysis would be good. In media studies, for example, because media studies involve TV, film, online platforms, and they use multiple other type of communicating messages. So that is why this one is very useful in, in media studies. It can also be extremely useful in education. Because in education, we need some time to create e-learning environment and that would definitely involve different modes of contributing to teaching and learning. And that would help us to communicate better with our students and to impart them the knowledge. Same is the case with advertising and marketing because they involve visual, textual and auditory elements. In order to persuade the readers or the listeners or the audience to keep on purchasing the article they are advertising and in that way this also needs multiple discourse analysis social media is now not simply the textual messages it contains emojis videos images text wherever these things are involved for example on twitter you can see all these things there in tiktok and instagram especially we would require definitely to involve with multimodal analysis because if we don't do so, some of the parts of communication we can miss. So these are the areas where multimodal discourse analysis would be most useful and a requisite as well. Some of the theoretical portions are also very important which govern over the multimodal analysis. One of them is systemic functional linguistics, linguistics called SLF. This is provided by Michael Halliday which tries to explore how the language communicates and functions and creates meaning with the social context. Semiotics are another one. This has been invented by Charles Sanders, Pierce, and Ferdinand D. Sources. All of these people emphasize the signs and the symbols which are used in the creation of any media, media which becomes important in the communication or conveying of the meaning. So that is another theoretical framework. Similarly, we can go for visual cultures also and examine the role of visual imagery in culture and communication. Anthropology and sociology are also important for the multimodal communications as well as analysis because they involve cultural and social structures which are very much important when we undertake the contextual analysis and in the process of this multimodal discourse analysis. There are challenges in it as well. It's not that simple. Everywhere where we get some facility, we get some problems as well. For example, this type of analysis is very complex because when one involves into all kinds of modes to gather data, analyze data, at that time, the chances of error or misunderstanding are also there. And handling of such type of multivariate data would also be difficult. So that's the complexity of analysis. 
technological advancements have brought new things in it digital communication for example and that is why multimodal discourse analysis needs to adapt according to that rapidly advancing technology is calling for the new changes and new kind of introductions into this multimodal discourse analysis here we are involved with number of things like uh, culture also sociology also psychology also visuals also and that is why it requires interdisciplinary approach unless we are a little bit of expert having good information of these disciplines we cannot continue with the perfect kind of uh, multimodal analysis so all these things create number of challenges and perhaps in future these challenges may be solvable with the passage of time so finally by considering the interplay of various modes multimodal discourse analysis provides a richer more nuanced understanding of communication in contemporary context our current age is definitely the age where new things have emerged up and popped up and digital communication is playing a big role so that is why it is necessary to undergo the evolution of this process of multimodal analysis and it is much more required at this moment as compared to ever past times so thank you for watching hopefully you have enjoyed this video if so do not fail to hit the subscribe button as well as the like button i may be answering some of the comments on it as well so thank you for watching hope to see you in some next video